So for us, I'd say the engine that became critical was our um, recruiting and then our, uh, our learning and development group. So we needed to figure out how do you move from hiring five or six people a month to how do you hire 50 to 100 people a month? Who oversees that? Yeah, so um, Nilima, who's who's the co-founder, um, she heads um, human resources, talent acquisition, um, and also the the finance uh, side. Um, so we, <clears throat> at the moment, you know, the, the 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 one group that that we haven't spoken, which is kind of the core to our, our business, is our operations group. So Anush, who's our our chief um, operating officer. Basically, he he runs the ship like um, like no one else that I've known, uh, to be honest, right? And in many ways, um, we're we're there to to just kind of facilitate, understand the, the requirements, and kind of alter alter our strategies according to to their requirements, right? So this I'm talking about the the talent acquisition plan, um, or I'm talking about kind of you know human resource engagement, like. You know what are the career paths that that we need to develop? What is the investment that that we need to make in the organization so that people stick around for for a long time? They're excited to 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 be with us. And then from a client side, you know what are the additional value that that we can add to to clients that in turn then then gives opportunities to the people that we have onboarded to kind of go in different directions, um, you know, in terms of their uh, career growth. So. Um, at the moment, um, Nilima um, heads the uh, the human resources and the talent acquisition group. Just hiring people is like finding the right person is such a such a risk. How do you how do you do that consistently? Right. So we've kind of we've learned through our our mistakes, and I, I think now we we have like real confidence and and conviction in our our hiring capabilities in terms of the scale that that we are currently operating. So. We've we've invested a, a lot in terms of um, getting the right talent through the door, uh, right from having, especially above a certain level, leads and managers having them go through you know a, a personality assessment, uh, psychometric tests. Apart from the the technical testing, so you know if you're hiring for a publisher side platform, you do your normal Google Ad Manager, App Nexus, whatever the case may be, you put them so, through certain tests that are in line with, with their previous experience. But that's just a technical component. That doesn't get you in, in media mint. Uh, there is the, the attitude, the personality, the culture fitment. These are the real intangible pieces that are key to, um, key to successful hiring. So we've invested a, a lot in terms of having the right tests in place having the right interview mechanism in, in place so that you're looking for, for signs and, and signals. So Jason touched upon learning and development. So apart from learning and development or technical aspects, there is a whole kind of how do you conduct an interview? How are you, how are you kind of qualifying a person to go to the next stage of, of the interview process? Um, we've, we've invested quite a bit of, of our time and effort um, in that. And as I mentioned, um, it's an it's an ever evolving process, but at the moment we feel fairly confident that, regardless of the ask um, coming in from from the sales sales team, or regardless of the size of the pipeline, um, we we are well well positioned uh, to cater to that demand. So let's jump a little bit forward to the current moment. Um, it's April twenty twenty. Uh, we we all negotiated the coronavirus and COVID nineteen. Um, global challenges. And as, um, uh, you know, I was really impressed with, with the steps that you took to protect you, your own team. Uh, you guys were definitely forward thinking in, in how you approach the safety of, of your organization, uh, the members of your organization. Can you speak a little bit to the challenges and just the overall things that are happening in the world today? And I know it's an evolving situation, but like I said, like I, it was just really heartening to hear how well you guys were taking care of of your people in really, really, really uncertain times. The very first thing is, I think we we had our our ears to the ground. Uh, we were very aware. Um, we were ahead of the curve in in many ways. Um, luckily, India is 
is not as badly affected as as some of the other countries but obviously i mean as of as of today i think uh, the numbers have have swollen and uh, we are above i think barely above 10000 cases um as soon as as the news started trickling in we started taking our cues from from other countries in terms of what they're doing what's the what's the impact on on society what's the impact on on business um we are very pleased in in hindsight that we were at least 3 or 4 days ahead of of the curve which makes a big difference by the way like i just read an article i just read an article that or my wife actually told me about she's like the different it's it's quite possible that the difference between the low number of cases in california and the high number of cases in new york is a week the week that new york so california went into sort of a general stay at home order a week before or like 6 days before new york thank you for listening to this episode of the la business podcast if you like what we're doing on this podcast please consider subscribing on apple or google play leaving a five star review and sharing with your friends. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for a guest you'd like to hear on this podcast, please email me, robert at brillmedia.co. Thank you. Have a fantastic day.